Welcome everybody to another Godot 3.0 tutorial. This time we'll be covering tile sets. Uh, included in the description box below is a download to the project that we'll be using for this tutorial. If you never imported a project before, go ahead and download the project file, place it into a place into a folder where you can quickly recover it because you're going to have to click import there and then path over to wherever you have it. And then path over to where I have it. Open the file and then double click on project.godot, import and edit, and as you might expect, it imports the project and opens it up so that we can edit it. When you press play to begin initially, you will see that we have a basic platformer with a flat, um, invisible, static body at the bottom here. You may, of course, look at the Godot bot scene script at your own time if you'd like to modify the way the platforming works, maybe make the dropping a little bit faster, a little bit floatier. I would like to at this time credit Kevin Pagash, who uh, allowed me to use his code for this tutorial in which we will be demonstrating tile sets. Now to make a tile set, or to start making one rather, you want to of course start with an empty scene. Jumping over quickly to the 2D editor here, we're going to add a node, not a spatial node, oopsie daisy, okay no, we're sticking the, sticking the 2D here, make that to be one of these. I'm going to go ahead and rename it to tile set. You may, of course, name it whatever you want, but so that we're a little bit more concise here, we're just going to go with that. First thing you want to do here is you want to add the sprite that you're going to be using for the tile set. And if you've never seen what a tile set is, well, it's, it's more or less a, um, a grid-based a grid based system for placing objects, or uh, see, mini scenes, I suppose, would be the proper term, or nodes, actually. In any case, go ahead and add the sprite here as I've done so. Press load and uh, go to tile set platforms file. I've gone ahead and pressed these little squares in here that we can use as a temporary sprite because I'm not an artist, of course. You probably already have noticed. And go ahead and add a, uh, a static body to the as well so we can make sure that our uh, character, which is a rigid body, by the way, uh, in character mode, so we can have him collide with these platforms and walk on them. To quickly type in collision shape 2D here. Make sure we give it a rectangle 2D shape and we're going to make its extents 32 by 32 because this is a 64 by 64 image. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to rename this to platform and you want whenever you add a new tile which is actually just the sprite in our case we're just going to have the sprite node. You want to make sure that they're um, uh, they have unique names, so you can't have two sprites named platform here. You want to have a platform in our case painful. Or red, I suppose. Because we're going to be using the red square as our texture. Like so. I'm also going to transform, change the position of this to 64 over, just so they're not aren't overlapping. It doesn't actually affect the tile set creation, but it does, um, does make it easier to see all of them. So I'm going to do a similar... Um, process here for our painful tile. There we go. However, I'm actually whoops. However, I'm actually going to make this uh, the hitbox a little bit lower so I can demonstrate something that can be done for isometric RPGs, which is we're going to be using Y sort. Uh, so thirty-two. Get this by. Uh, I think six, sixteen. Yeah. Like so, and then we're going to offset this by 16 down. So our hitbox is a little bit lower. So now what we're going to do is we're going to first save the scene. This saves the tile set scene as a regular scene as you would uh, normally. However, we want to make this a tile set specifically, something a tile set usable by Godot. The way that we do that is we go to the scene menu, convert to a tile set. Go ahead and name it. Obviously, I'm just going to go with tiles. T-R-E-S, hit save, and you can see here that we have a T-R-E-S file, which is now our tile set. Go ahead and go back to the level scene and delete our platform. Click on the level node and add a tile map. Tile maps are where you put in your tile set so that you can, um, of course, place the tiles. What you're looking at here is the tile map editor. Go ahead and yeah, first here, go to your tile set and load our... Um, our tile set we created, and here we are. Now the tile set editor uh, essentially parses the tile set scene that we took here 
and um, creates tiles based on our sprites. So if we place our black platforms here, let's make that our base ground and maybe like a mini platforming puzzle, I guess it's relatively simple. Um, we put the red ones over here. If we go ahead and press play, you'll see that the static bobbies have now are, of course, present within the, um, the tiles, meaning that we can use them uh, as platforms. Let's hop off on this one. Ooh, the wall jump. I think I actually went over the over the wall there. It felt like over here. So I'm going to go back here. And if you see, if we jump on this one, we'll sink a little bit through it, and we'll be right behind it. Now, depending on the order that you have these objects in, if I put the tile map above the Godot bar, we'll actually see here, you should hopefully see, they're actually above um, the red uh, the red uh, tiles there. To sort that out, we can use Y sort. And the Y sort is what you'll usually see in isometric uh, RPGs where you want to have, let's say, like a wall that's in the background. Um, you can have them oh, actually, <laughs> sorry, uh, that, that uh, having it above it guarantees that's going to be drawn ahead of it. But if you're using a tile set um, that you, that specifically you want to have the, um, uh, the character sort of behind the wall, you want to use Y sort. The reason why I had that work with it is because having a tile map above it, having a tile map above it literally guarantees that's going to be drawn above, um, it's going to be drawn first. So make sure you use Y sort for that. I just want to show that off. But what we got, what we want obviously is because the name is painful, we sort of, you'd probably expect that I would want I would want the um, oops, uh, that I would want the red ones to hurt our player. Now there is an, there is a way to do this. I'm going to make a sh quick shout out to Kids Can Code. They tried to help me with this, um, but the solution that we sort of came up with was a little bit too complicated for what I would consider to be sort of an introductory tutorial. Since tile sets are usually very important for people that want to make platformers and RPGs relatively quickly or design levels and iterate on them, so. The method that I'm going to use is much simpler, although a little bit hacky, although I think this is how it's mostly intended. Now, generally speaking, whenever you want to do hit detection, the easiest way to check if it's something is meant to hurt you, if you're meant to break it, is to use a group. Um, whenever you make contact with a specific tile in a tile map, it actually just returns the whole tile map, which means that um, you can't really detect if you're hitting a specific tile from the tile map, for example. For instance, we can't differentiate between hitting the platform or painful without using um, vectors. So to avoid using vectors, to keep this tutorial simple, we're going to just actually just use a separate tile map. So we're going to add another one to the scene. Uh, not the child of the first one. Then, pop it open. You can use the same, same tile set. But now we're going to add this whole tile map and all of the tiles it contains to the group uh, OW. So now what we're going to do here is we're going to just add uh, a couple of tiles from our uh, second tile map. Like so. And now we're going to check if for our Godobot, we're going to have our Godobot check if he's touching something painful. We're going to be using uh, adding on to uh, integrate forces method, which is a method specific to the rigid body 2D. Keep that in mind. We're going to start by making a variable count. And we're going to be using state, which is the, um, the state variable is the parameter, is the argument given by integrate forces. And we're going to say dot get colliding, uh, get collid, collide count. Can't exactly remember. So I'm going to, oh, contact count, get contact count. What this method does is it returns the number of objects that the rigid body 2D is colliding with. We want to get the count of them because we want to iterate through all of the objects that the rigid body 2D is colliding with because it could be touching more than one. We're going to subtract one from this because we're going to be looping through them. And if you're unfamiliar with the arrays, the account starts at zero. So we want to go, um, so we want to, uh, if you're iterating through all of them, we want to iterate through all of them minus one because we start the count at zero. And we're going to, of course, use in classic I loop or a, loop, a classic for loop, excuse me. Uh, so we're going to do a range of count. Set up your for loop just like that, and we're going to use an if statement here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to get contact collider object. Thank you. And we're going to use i. So what this method does, get contact collider object, is it returns the ith object that we are colliding with, which is why we want to iterate through all of them. So now that we have that object, we're going to check if it's in the group using is in group. Ow. 
that. And then if it is, we just queue free, which is, will, of course, delete our little robot friend. So now we jump in this red square above us. We successfully have freed our good old robot. And now if I can do this puzzle properly, I'm probably not going to, as you can imagine, but <laughs> I just don't hit the black ones that are part of the painful group. We're fine. Oh, okay. Well, I failed at that completely. Um, <laughs> maybe you can try that on your own, but of course you can also just design your own levels with the tools here. Um, and yeah, so tile sets are very powerful because they sort of let you create levels very quickly. For instance, if I think that's a little bit too difficult, I can uh, go into tile set here, right click on that. Oh, I don't think I even mentioned that right click is delete. So if you want to, uh, that's a different tile set. If I want to delete that platform because you just fall into an endless abyss, you just hold down right click and that'll delete them. Left click to add and you select the tile here, obviously. But yeah, tile sets are very powerful for making RPGs and um, uh, platform platformers here. And I touched the black squares. Let me try one more time before I <laughs> sign off here. But yep, tile sets are very, uh, very helpful for making levels quickly and iterating fast. And of course, iteration is the name of the game in agile development, of course. And of course, when you're making games, you definitely want to take user feedback into account. So again, thank you very much to Kevin Fakash for letting me borrow his platforming code. I simplified it just a little bit, but really most of it is... Uh, definitely uh, from his work and as well as kids can code for helping me out I'll link um, I'll link his YouTube tutorial series in the description because he also does tutorial videos on Godot and let's be honest they're quite better than mine thank you all for watching hopefully you've enjoyed hopefully you've learned something and I will see you all next time